Amen. Our scripture reading for today will come from the Gospel of John, chapter number 19, verses 38 through 42. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. Amen. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that is upon us. We thank you for the opportunity to just sit in your holy presence to worship you. We recognize, Lord, the significance of our gathering as we do so in remembrance of the ultimate price that you paid for our salvation. And for that, we simply say thank you. We confess and repent of our sin and ask that you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for just loving us and loving us enough to give the ultimate in your life, sacrifice as a substitute for our sins, that upon you we may now find the peace the reconciliation, the restoration of our connection to Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. We ask that you will now speak to us, Lord, that we may have an ear to hear, a heart to receive your holy word this day. This is our prayer in your Son, our Savior, Christ Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. We ask that you will pray with us as we preach the word of God today from this thought. The time is now. The time is now. In the text that we have before us, we have primarily two individuals, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. What does the scripture tell us concerning Joseph of Arimathea? Well, all of the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, give us glimpses of this man, Joseph of Arimathea. First of all, I do believe that the scripture distinguishes him by telling us He is Joseph of Arimathea to distinguish him so that no one will uh, create the heresy of thinking that this is the Joseph who had been the uh, husband of Mary at the birth of Christ. No, this is a totally different Joseph of Arimathea. And so just that fact alone keeps Uh, those who would try to pervert the word of God from being able to do so. For there are some who try to twist God's word. But the word of God cannot be twisted. It cannot be corrupted, even though men have tried to do so. So Joseph is of Arimathea. This is not the Joseph of Nazareth who had been the husband of Mary at the birth of Christ. He's of Arimathea. Matthew tells us in Matthew 27 that Joseph is 
rich. He's a wealthy man. And so he has been blessed abundantly of the Lord. And the scripture also says in uh, Matthew's gospel in the 27th chapter that this Joseph of Arimathea was a disciple of Jesus Christ. Mark in Mark 15 tells us that Joseph was an honorable counselor. And so he was a fair-minded man who, when the scripture says that he was a counselor, uh, many scholars believe that this refers to the fact that he was a part of the Sanhedrin council. The Sanhedrin was then that uh, body that the Roman government allowed the uh, Jewish people to have certain autonomy as it pertained to their own social and religious laws and rituals. And so the Sanhedrin was that council, if you will, that combination of the uh, city council and Supreme Court all rolled into one because it had the chief priests, it had the religious leaders, it had the elders, the social leaders, it had the Pharisees and the scribes, other religious leaders that, comp that comprised the Sanhedrin. Mark tells us that then Joseph was an honorable counselor and that he waited for the kingdom of God. And so he had an outlook towards the things of God that were written in the Old Testament canon. Luke tells us that Joseph was a counselor and a good man and just. Yes, that he was a good man, that his, his own moral compass was that it was tuned in to the things of God. He was a good man and just. He tried to treat others right and fairly. Luke goes on to add that Joseph had not consented to the actions of the Sanhedrin when the Sanhedrin uh, met and began to examine Jesus after his arrest in Gethsemane. And so this is what the scripture tells us about Joseph. But John adds that Joseph was a disciple, but secretly for fear of the Jews. Yes, the scholars and theologians have at various times criticized Joseph for not being more supportive of Christ openly when it mattered most or while Christ was alive. And yet, here we find John recording in this 19th chapter the actions of this secret disciple. John adds, as none of the other gospel writers add, that Nicodemus was also a part of this tandem that went and asked Pilate, for the body of Jesus, and then to ultimately prepare him for burial. What do we know about Nicodemus? Well, John tells us in the third chapter of John that it was this Nicodemus who came to Jesus by night. Nicodemus himself was also a ruler of the Jews. Nicodemus was a, a man of great influence socially, culturally. And here it was, Nicodemus in John 3 had gone to Jesus by night. Nicodemus was curious about what Jesus was doing and the power under which he was doing it. What Nicodemus said to Jesus that we know that you are a ruler sent from God and a teacher 
sent from God, but no man can do the miracle that you do except God be with him. It is then this setting in John chapter 3 where Jesus puts on record that a man must be born again. He continues to have a conversation with Nicodemus about this thing being born again. Nicodemus can't understand it because he's looking at it naturally from a man's perspective. Jesus speaks to him from God's perspective. Nicodemus says, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus says, no, Nicodemus, you're not looking at this from the right perspective. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. He says, marvel not, I say unto you, you must be born again. Yes, this leads then Jesus, as he's having this conversation with Nicodemus, to tell Nicodemus that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have eternal life. It is in this setting with Nicodemus that we have that hallmark verse of Scripture. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yes, this is Joseph and Nicodemus. The scripture says this, that Joseph goes to Pilate, and he besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus Christ. Now, notice this, church. The scholars and theologians who have criticized Joseph and Nicodemus for not being more supportive of Christ openly when it mattered most will uh, conclude that it was most important while Jesus was alive that these disciples should have been given service unto the Lord. And therefore, there are some who have concluded what they did was too little, too late. Here then is where, on my way home, I want to focus our attention. Was it too little and was it too late? <clears throat> Look at the reality of what has happened. And let us ask this question, and let us look not from men's perspective, but let us try to have a God perspective. Is it too little, and is it too late? I raised the question then, was there anybody else that had been so moved that they would go and the scripture says that Joseph boldly, <clears throat> boldly went to Pilate. Now, that was somewhat dangerous in itself because uh, Pilate was a man given to a mercurial type of behavior. Even Pilate's wife warned him that she had been troubled in a dream, that he should not have anything to do with the innocent blood of Jesus Christ. And yet for his own political 
purposes, Pilate listened to the mob and not the word of the Lord. Yes, Pilate was the same one that when he knew, the scripture says he knew Jesus was innocent, yet delivered Jesus to be crucified and then went and washed his physical hands in a bowl of water. And yet he could not wash the blood off of his eternal hand. Yes, this is the pilot that Joseph boldly goes to and asks for the body of Christ. Secondly, Joseph then, remember it said that uh, he had not yet openly but secretly been a disciple for fear of the Jews. Well, those same folk that had been around the cross crying, crucify him, the same folk that had been around who spat upon the Lord, the same folk who had enemies towards the Lord, was not uh, more than likely yet be around. But it did not stop now Joseph from boldly going to Pilate, risking the mercurial behavior of Pilate or the wrath of those who are yet around. He goes to Pilate and asks for the body of Jesus Christ. I ask you the question. Was there anybody else who volunteered to do this? With all of the criticism that we may level at Joseph and Nicodemus for what they didn't do during the life of Christ, I would submit to you that this is not too little, neither is it too late. For they claim the body of Christ so that it will be properly handled. What happens if Joseph and Nicodemus don't show up to do what they do? Who else is there that is there and saying, here I am and I am willing to do what's necessary to give this man who was innocent of all charges a proper burial. Well, when we look at then the burial itself, we see that Joseph and Nicodemus spared no expense. Yes, the sepulcher that was used was a new sepulcher where no one else had been laid in that sepulcher. Yes, I submit to you, Joseph gave Jesus the best that he had. Nicodemus, the Bible says, brings 100 pounds of mixture of myrrh and aloes. Church, when the scholars calculate the cost of that, it wasn't cheap. And so I submit to you it's a picture that Nicodemus, too, gives his best now in the service of the Lord. Contrast now Jesus being wrapped in linen, and linen in the Bible pictures purity. It shows the purity of Jesus Christ. Compare that to when Christ was born. Remember, he was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Yes, just what Joseph and Mary had on hand was used when he was born into the world. But now we see that somebody recognizes that even in his death, 
when you look back at his life, the burial should be one fit for a king. For he is king of kings and lord of lords. On my way home this morning, church, I submit to you that what the scripture shows us in these five verses, John 19, 38 through 42, that when it came to Joseph and Nicodemus, it wasn't too little and it wasn't too late. And so now the word to you today, do what you can right now. No matter what you have not done up to this point, don't let what you haven't done cause you not to do what you can do right now. And don't let the criticism of others as the criticism of the scholars and theologians are towards Joseph and Nicodemus. Don't let that stop you from doing what you can right now. Because from God's perspective, just God causes things to, to move in his own time. Yes, Nicodemus and Joseph may have had opportunities before to have been more outspoken. And when we look at our lives, we probably can look back and identify times when we could have been more open in our support of and our identification with our Lord in the public. And yet, we may have failed just as Joseph and Nicodemus. But don't let the past failure cause you to not let God use you right here and right now. Have our witness this morning, church. Yes, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the time is now when we look at the world in which we live. The time is now. We need to get in a hurry. The time is now to serve the Lord. The time is right now to serve the Lord. Church is getting late in the evening, and the sun is going down. But the time is now, and we ought to get in a hurry and do it now. Just as Joseph, just as Nicodemus, don't hold back on the Lord. Give God the best you got right now. Don't wait for later on. So right now that we are up at this early hour of the day, give God a hand clap of praise right where you are. Right where you are. Start right now telling God thank you. Thank God. For all that he's done for you. Give God the praise for where he's brought you from. Give God the glory that wherever he leads, we will follow. May God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Amen.